This is my boss locked account. I've locked this account to only getting experience from bosses and only getting my items from bosses. That means I can't pick up items, kill other monsters outside of bosses, or buy from shops. This account is also an Iron Man, so that means no trading or no using the Grand Exchange. My goal is to obtain some of the best and most iconic weapons and armor in the game. To do this, I need to do some of the hardest content in this game on an account that has only been trained through bosses. And this is my journey. I just wanted to say before the episode starts, a big thank you to everyone for last episode for subscribing and liking the video. Your support over this series has been insane and I can't say thank you enough. I also wanted to mention that you can join the Discord with the link in the description and also follow my Twitch with the other link in the description. But once again, thank you all for the support. And now let's get on to the video. I want to start this episode off with me doing some quests for some combat XP. Well, mainly attack XP. So I'm going to quickly do some of these quests since I want to get more Chaos Elemental KC. But I don't want to be there getting one kill in one hour 45 minutes again. So I'm going to go complete some quests that will now be much easier with higher magic level. I'm going to start off with Vampire Slayer, an old favorite. I imagine it will be a lot easier than last time. As you might expect, this was much easier to complete since I can hit higher than a 2. Now onto my next quest being Fight Arena. There is Fight Arena finished and that has given me 12k attack XP and gotten us to 39 attack and also 16 thieving. I also got the Khazard armor which is equivalent to iron. I could already make an iron medhelm but the plate body gives me good defensive stats and also has no negative magic bonus unlike a normal plate body. It also only weighs half a kilo when a regular plate body weighs close to 10 kilos. Alright now off to do the Grand Tree is the next quest. There is the Grand Tree done. That gave me heaps of XP. 12k attack XP gets us to 43 attack from 39, got 2 magic levels and 4 agility levels. All those quests saved about 6 hours of training attack and nearly 3 hours of training agility for me. I don't have any attack XP quests left that I can currently do, but I am going to try and do Tree Gnome Stronghold. The reason I say try is because on the wiki it says you need 6 normal logs, but I'm going to see if I can actually do it with oak logs because I can't currently get any normal logs. So let's give it a try, I suppose. Okay, it looks like he does just need normal logs, so we'll have to wait until I can actually get some in the future. Now, with all the attack XP quests done that I can currently do, I want to go back to Burrows to mainly train my melee stats. But before I do that, I want to get Shades of Morton completed so I can use the Shades of Morton minigame teleport every 20 minutes instead of my 10 minute journey from Ferox Enclave. The one thing that is holding me back is 15 Herb Law, but that isn't a problem with the herbs I have in my bank. I do, however, want to do Jungle Potion for the 775 Herbler XP. Then I will clean my herbs to finish up the levels. So I'm going to do Jungle Potion and then move on to Shades of Morton. I just finished Jungle Potion and as you can see, I got 9 Herblore. I didn't record it because I was recording and when I started and pressed record, I actually stopped the current recording. But oh well, it's time to go clean my herbs. I just got given 10 whole bonds from Trite. So a massive shout out to Trite. Kind of scared me when he asked how many I'm accepting. So I'm glad he didn't mortgage his house for more bonds to give me. There is 15 herb lore. Now it is time for me to go and do Shades of Morton. What I get from Shades of Morton is the ability to use the minigame teleport, but that isn't all it does for me. With Shades of Morton giving me the ability to create Serum 207s, I can use these on the villagers since it is a resource obtained from bosses to make them. The villagers can give me a few items I need. First of all, they can give me Swamp Paste, which is what I actually need to finish this quest. The other item they can give me is normal logs. So with these normal logs, I can go and complete Tree Gnome Village, which will give me some more attack XP and can give me access to the Tree Spirits teleports. This will just be great to have another teleport method around the game and will be much easier for me to do fruit tree runs in the future. I am able to do this quest and mini game because all the resources to do it I have gotten from bossing and killing the five lore shades is a part of the quest so I can actually do it. Is this the end of the quest? Oh my God, finally, this was such a shit quest. God, that is a, just a fucking absolutely abysmal crap minigame. I, yeah. Now that I've finished Shades of Morton, I'm going to go and complete Tree Gnome Village since I need the six logs to actually finish it. There is Tree Gnome Village completed. I actually forgot you get the Gnome Amulet from this quest. It actually has some really good stats on it. 13 Stab, Crush, and Slash defense is really quite good, especially considering the only amulet I had before this was the Games Necklace that has no stats. Also got 45 attack from this quest. Now it's time for me to head back to Barrows to train my strength up. I'm going to focus on training strength there, so I'm not going to kill any of the Barrows brothers only if they get a good spawn in the crypt. Because I currently only want the strength XP to kill the Chaos Elemental faster, because that is what's currently locking me behind the next stage of my account. 
I decided that I'm going to actually start getting just under 75% potential so I can actually start receiving some death runes in the chest. I am very close to 41 magic and can actually start using them. I also got a Verak kill this trip since I got a good spawn, so let's see what we get. I just got 40 strength. Last level was a new max hit, so I can now hit 7s, which has made this a heap faster. Plus, having defensive gear is really helpful. I want to get another max hit so I can hit 8s, and then I'll head back to the Chaos Alley. I might actually do some calculations first to see how long it's going to take me to kill it, and see what stats I will need to kill it in about 45 minutes, and then train to that level. So I just did some calculations on how long it would take me to kill the Chaos Elemental if I could hit 8s. So first off, I need to train to 48 strength to hit 8s. I'm currently at 40 strength, so from here it will take me about 10 to 12 hours since my XP and hour is just under 4k. Anyway, after putting in 45 attack and 48 strength in a DPS calculator, it comes out to 0.1 damage per second on the Chaos Elemental with those stats. So if we time 0.1 by 60 seconds to get my damage per minute, it comes out to be 6. Now, with my average being a 6 and taking the Chaos Elemental regen into account, the damage I will have to deal to the Chaos Elemental will be about 300. So let's call this the Chaos Elemental's real health. Now, if you do 300 divided by 6, you'll get the time it takes me to kill the Chaos Elemental which comes out to 50 minutes. So on average with those stats, it will take me 50 minutes per kill, which I'm actually super happy about. 50 minute average kills is so, so much better than taking an average of one hour and 52 minutes from the last time I worked it out, which was also wrong. It was actually over two hours on average. So I got really lucky last time when I killed it. With those stats, I'll be ready to grind out the Chaos Elemental for Bat Bones and Weapon Poison plus plus. So let's go and train up and start grinding this boss out. Got an exam random event. This actually starts our next lamping grind, which will be Slayer. First, I want to actually do the museum quiz to get myself 9 Slayer so then I can put the book into it for more Slayer XP. There is the museum quiz done and that has gotten us to 9 Hunter and Slayer. It's time to put this book on Slayer and get some Slayer XP. And with that, it starts our new lamping grind. Now it's time to head back to Barrows to try and get 48 strength. So I just got 47 strength and I was killing a rat and I noticed I could now hit eights. So it looks like I did the wrong calculations of when I could actually hit an eight. So that is going to save me about two hours of strength training. So that's great. I'm happy to save two hours. Now I'm actually going to head off to the Chaos Elemental again so I can hopefully get that Bat Bones drop. There we are. Just set up the Chaos Elemental spot. So now it's time to sit here for about an hour and kill it. By the way, this was streamed on my Twitch. So if you want to watch live, there is a link to that in the description. Imagine. Oh, we've hit it. We've done it. Oh my god, the antidote plus plus fucking baited me. I thought it was weapon plus plus. God fucking damn it. 59 minutes, 50 seconds. Oh, what a bait. I could do Scorpio with this, actually. That would make it really easy. I'll have to get my range up more to actually kill the actual Scorpion Guardians, but this does make Scorpio possible. More possible than what it is currently. Oh, there we go. That's the second Chaos Elemental. Oh, well, third. Oh, I got Death Runes. It's nice. Oh my god, that's Bat Bones. Holy fuck. I didn't even notice. Oh my god. That was like... Because it was just the blue text of the Death Runes. Oh my god. I can... I can do Merlin's Crystal. And then Holy Grail. I can move on. That was three kills and I got them. Holy shit. That was so fast. All right now I just... If I die, I lose them. Wow. I, I seriously doubt someone's going to pick up Bat Bones, but it's just, I've got to get to the bank now. Holy crap, I didn't expect to get them so quick. There are like a 1 in 10 drop chance, but I expected to go dry. I expected to go like double the drop rate, but that was definitely not double the drop rate. That was way below one, one third of the drop rate, basically. Holy crap, that's so good. All right, now I'm going to go change up what I'm doing and actually go complete Merlin's Crystal now. Now that we've got the Bat Bones, I can actually finish the quest. But just before that, I actually just need to get a couple more items for the quest. One item is some bread. I will just need to come to my house and get some flour to make the bread with. And there we go. There is my bread. Now I just need to grab one more item and that is a bucket of wax. All I need to do for that is use insect repellent on a bee nest to get some wax from it. There is the insect repellent I need for the quest. 
Just a reminder that I can pick up this insect repellent because it is classified as a quest item and allowed in my rules. And there is the bucket of wax. Time to go complete this quest. Just got the Excalibur from the Lady of the Lake. I was actually planning to use the Excalibur as my account's main weapon if I didn't get so lucky with the Black Longsword and the Mithril Scimitar. It is actually a very good weapon which is just worse than an Addy Longsword stat-wise. But the Mithril Scimitar is just better than it because it's a 4-tick weapon and the Excalibur is a 5-tick weapon. So it is just a bit slower and less DPS overall. Here is where I needed the bat bones, just for a little part right at the end of the quest. Now that is Merlin's crystal done, time to go start Holy Grail. Now I've just made it up to the Fisher Realm in the Holy Grail quest, and I have to kill that guy on the bridge. And what's special about the Black Knight Titan is his drop table and how it locks so much of my account's future content behind it. The Black Knight Titan has many useful drops for my account and is the only way for my account to ever receive some of these items. What I will mainly be after is his seeds drop table. The Titan is the only monster I can kill with my account restrictions that has access to low level seeds. The seeds I will be hunting for are potato, onion, and cabbage seeds. These seeds will let me be able to do Fremnik and Trials with no exceptions and allow me to unlock Dagonoth Rex, Supreme, and Prime, which will be how I get my future best in slot rings. Some other seeds I'll be looking for are the Barley Seeds and Asgardian Seeds. Getting both of these items allows me to brew my own Asgardian Ale, which is used for Death Plateau, which is what's locking me out of God Wars Dungeon. And finally, the last seed I want from the Giant is the Redberry Bush Seed. Redberry Bushes will help me unlock some quests. They allow me to complete the Knight Sword for massive smithing XP. I can also use the berries to make Red Dye, which is also used in a handful of other quests. This isn't all the Black Knight Titan unlocks for me. On its other drop table, it has something extremely good for this account. And that item is the Giant Key. I have said many times I will not be killing key bosses. But... Oh ball but the exception to this. I didn't allow key bosses because of the easy XP I would be able to get from farming the monsters for keys. But with the Black Knight Titan, it is labeled as a boss on the wiki and also gives me massively reduced XP. Hitting a 1 on the Titan will only reward me with 1 XP compared to the normal rates of getting 4 XP for hitting a 1. This means while I am no doubt going to have to do over 300 kills, I will be getting very minimal amount of XP and have access to the Hill Giant's drop table through this boss monster. Now, when I said this quest unlocks a deceptively large amount of content last episode, this is what I meant. This monster will change the future of this account. Now, to kill the Titan, I will have to flinch it since it has ridiculously high range and magic defense. So this means it will be a very slow process to get all these kills, but it is something that I will have to do because there is way too much lock behind this guy's drop table. Now, let's get to flinching him and see what drops we can get. Oh, oh, that's the first kill. It doesn't even drop big bones. Oh my God, the wiki has partially lied to me. The wiki says it drops big bones, but it only drops normal bones. That sucks. The wiki says it always drops big bones. So I thought actually killing this guy would actually grant me big bones each kill. And I was planning to use that for prayer because this that took like 30 minutes to kill him. Man, that sucks. I worked out you can actually flinch this guy a bit faster. So that should speed up my kills a fair bit. Now, let's see what we get. Only coins and still just bones, unfortunately. Now, I might be repeating myself, but I found out you can flinch him even faster, so you're just doing it at your weapon's attack speed and he can't hit you back. I'm pretty sure this is because his aggressive range is only one space away from him. So when I walk outside of his attack range, he loses sight of me and can't attack me straight away when I go to attack him again. So now, I can quickly just attack him and then move one tile back and click him again instantly and just wait for my next attack. I have done the new method this whole kill and it's only taken me about 6 minutes to kill him. This is so much better than the original 20 to 30 minutes. So I can now see this grind as more doable. And there is some lore runes. Now I can go and try my hard clue scroll again since I had a step that was in the desert. After I went and banked my last inventory, I grabbed my myth sim to see how fast the kills would be if I used it and then last hit it with the Excalibur. The kill time was only 5 minutes which means it could be possible to get 12 kills per hour which will massively speed up this grind because after 10 hours, that could mean an extra 20 kills, which is nearly two hours of work. Oh my God, I just got a giant key. Yeah, I actually just got a giant key from this dude. I have only done very, very little quests. I couldn't actually just believe I just got that. What is my loot tracker on this guy? 21 kills. I've only done 21 kills and I've already got a giant key. I was not even 100% sure if there was this was actually on his drop table. I Obviously he has bones instead of big bones, so I wasn't sure on that. Well, at least I'm positive there's a giant key on his drop table now. This is great. This means I can do Obor. No way I just got another giant key. 
I still have another one in my inventory. I expected like maybe two this entire grind, not two in one inventory. What is happening? That was like, what did I get my last one on? 26? That's two kills later. Literally, no, it was more than two kills. I swear to God, it was more than two kills. Whatever, who cares? I got a second giant key. I can at least get two Obor kills now. I did not expect that at all. What is happening? There is my first lot of seeds I need. Onions are a 1 in 64 chance, so I basically got them at half drop rate. There is the barley seeds that I need for Death Plateau. Now I just need two drops of Vesganian seeds and then I can finish that quest. I found it pretty funny, but I got crashed by this incredibly cute noob. They killed the Titan in full Mystic with a Rune Halberd and even offered me the Halberd after they were finished with it. It was an incredibly sweet moment. Finally, some water runes. These are just as common as potato seeds, so I went two times dry on them. I wanted them since they will let me do waterfall quest, which is what I will be doing after I finish this inventory. With completing waterfall quest, I'll get about 13k strength and attack XP, which get me a few levels and make this grind a bit faster, hopefully. So I'll finish up this inventory and then go do waterfall quest. There is finally the potato seeds. It is the most common drop, but took me nearly double the drop rate to get them. Okay, so I was looking through my bank and I thought, since I now have lore runes from the Black Knight Titan, I might as well finish up this hard clue I started earlier but couldn't complete since I had no way of getting to the desert. Now, I'm going to go and change my house to be in the desert and teleport to it since the next step is near the Calphite Cave. There is that step done. Now I can actually do the next step, which is super lucky. The next step could even be the casket. All right, I just have to dig here and let's see. It's another clue. I'm actually kind of scared to look at what step it is. All right, let's look. Orthos Dungeon, I can actually do this step. Let's try. Oh, oh, oh. All right, so as you just saw, I actually managed to get a hard casket. I have no idea how this was accomplished. This was just pure, pure luck. I'm going to open it and I'm going to see what I get from this. Like this could have some massive upgrades in it or it could just be absolute trash. So it's just time to open it. I just got to rip off this band-aid and do it. Oh, I'm nervous. Oh my God, this is a hell of a good clue. What the hell? I got a magic short bow. This took me 32 clues to get this on my actual other Iron Man. And I have an actual good rune weapon now and rune legs. Holy crap. Like I already have a rune full helm, but this is an insane clue. Oh my God. This is so good. This is going to massively help with my grind on the actual Black Knight Titan. I don't even know what I can max hit with this, but it's going to be great. <laughs> I couldn't have asked for anything better. I could have, but um, I'm happy. This is so good. I just, it's so lucky. All these episodes lately, I've just had like luck just coming in out of nowhere. This is super good. Look at that bonus plus 29 melee strength over, my over the Mithril Scimitar. So that gives me 20 and that gives me 49. That gives me plus 47 slash when that only gives me plus 21. It's more than two times better than that. Wow, that was a great clue reward. I got three upgrades from this one clue. But let me talk about the rune longsword. It will be nearly 30% better than the Mithril Scimitar for killing the Black Knight Titan. Since it gives me three extra max hits, which means I can now hit an 11. It also improves my accuracy so I can get 0.12% better accuracy over my Mithril Scimitar, which is huge. As I said before, this would be close to a 30% increase in my DPS. This means it could make my current grind of the Black Knight Titan about 10 hours quicker if I go on drop rate for everything I need. Now, I'm going to say it, but this changes everything. Now it's time for me to go do Waterfall Quest for all that nice XP. That is now quest completed for a nice 13.75k attack and strength XP, getting us two attack levels and one strength level, which will come in handy for the Black Knight Titan grind. Now with that quest completed, I wanted to try a new boss. So let's leave here and get prepared for that. As you might be seeing in my inventory, I have a giant key in it. And yes, that is right. The next boss I want to kill will be Obor. I am not 100% sure if I'll be able to kill him without prayer, but I want to have a try. Obor's max hit is 22 with melee and 26 with range. I only have 44 HP. So a max melee hit will be half my HP and a maxed range hit will be more than half of my HP. What I want to kill Obor for is the upgrades that he can give me. From the weapons and armor drop table, what I want is the Rune Kite Shield, Rune Chain Body, and Rune Two Hand, and of course the Hill Giant Club. The Rune Two Hand and Hill Giant Club 
will give me more DPS when killing the Black Knight Titan, with the Hill Giant Club giving me an increase of 0.05%, which is actually a pretty good increase for me. The rest of Obor's drop table is okay, but it's, it's not great. The only other drop I'd like would be the 50 Big Bone drop, since that will help me speed up my prayer grind massively. Anyway, let's see how this kill is gonna go. Okay, that is our first KC of Obor. That was actually not that hard. Um, okay, so I've got Chaos Runes as a drop. Okay, that's fine. Okay, you always get a beginner clue scroll from killing this dude as well. So that's pretty good. I got some combat achievements too. Two of them. Obor, Novice, and Back to the Wall. I think that one's when I don't get hit a distance or something. But yeah, that's pretty good. I actually got the... Uh, the Chaos Runes isn't a too bad of a drop. Like, I could have got worse. I could have just got Emeralds or... Not Emeralds. I could have got Rubies or something. But I might act... I'm going to actually do the next kill of him. Because that only used up only a couple Death Runes. Just 20, 21 Death Runes. So that's pretty good. Just made it back to Obor. I couldn't finish the clue since the last step needed me to get Leather Boots. And I thought, why not try another kill of Obor? So let's give it another go. Maybe last hit. We'll hope. Yeah, all right. That's the last hit. Let's see what we get. Uh, Cosmic Runes this time. Cosmic Runes is kind of like probably the worst drop I could get from him. Like rune wise and actually it's not the worst drop. I think the worst drop would literally be rubies or diamonds, whatever he drops. And this is actually where I was going to end the video, but I decided I was actually going to do something else. All right, we'll go for the first one. Wow, that's um actually good. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It is actually pretty good. That's uh, everything I need for Fremi Trials now. Uh, what do we get from the second one? Oh my god. There is no fucking way I just got that. What the fuck? <laughs> I've never had that on anything before. What just happened? Oh my god. <sighs> what? That's like one in 256 or some shit. Holy crap. What the absolute shit? I'm just really lucky with opening stuff. I don't know what it is. Like... <laughs> Anyway, that's where I'm going to end this episode. Heaps of progress in this episode. I went from these stats on the left to these stats on the right. I managed to get many levels in combat related stats and even got to start leveling some other different skills like Herblore, Slayer and Hunter. I nearly gained 100 total levels in this episode and managed to do all this in just under 50 hours. I got massive gear upgrades with the Rune Longsword, Rune Plate Legs and Magic Shortbow. Of course, we can't forget about the stale baguette, which is about a 0.02% chance of getting if you factor in the rate of getting a quiz master and the one in 256 from getting the baguette in the mystery box itself. Now with the end of the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe too. You can also join the discord with the link in the description and follow my Twitch with the other link in the description. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope to see you all next episode.